Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. Occasionally we learn of the birth of a new baby, and at my age it's usually the grandchild of a friend or relative, and I find myself wondering what the story is behind the name given the child. Not just the given first name, but the given middle name as well. Sometimes the combination seems a bit odd. But the choice is not mine to question. Usually the parents involved have a solid reason for their choice. Sometimes the middle name honors a grandmother's given name or often a maternal relative's maiden name. I have a granddaughter whose first name is Kelly, spelled with a second E, K-E-L-L-E-Y, because that was her grandmother's maiden name. We have another tradition on my side of the family. When a son is born, the baby's middle name is his father's first name. I carry my dad's first name as my middle name. My son carries my first name as his middle name. And his son carries his dad's first name, me, as his middle name. Sometimes the two names together might sound strange to outsiders, but to our family it means a great deal. Also, names evolve. A woman who's a friend of the family has a son who plays college baseball. She recently shared a list of the kids on the team's pitching staff. All of them are about 20 years old. Their names are Connor, Chad, Logan, Kyle, Ryan, and her own son, Tyler. There's not a Clarence or a Chauncey or a Phineas or a Mortimer to be found. I was reminded of my own aunts and uncles, all of them born more than a century ago and all deceased. I had an Aunt Wilhelmina, an Aunt Mildred, two Aunt Helens, an Uncle Otto, an Uncle Walter, and yes, an Uncle Clarence. My mother's name was Edna, another one you don't hear anymore. Don't underestimate the effects of cultural influences on names. Taylor was already trendy, but the global phenomenon of Miss Swift has escalated its popularity among parents of babies of the 2020s. It wasn't that long ago that Liam was a hugely popular choice for boys. Sophia and Emma have been trending names for girls for some time now. Sophia is from the Greek for wisdom, so that helps its popularity. Sometimes it can be a mistake to go with a name that's suddenly popular. A recent survey of parents in England determined that 20% had come to regret the name they chose for their child because it no longer seemed cool or clever. No examples were cited, uh, so it's probably just as well. Uh, politics occasionally injects itself into the process. Prior to the 1980s, hardly anyone named a newborn Reagan, but the name became quite popular for a time after Ronald Reagan became president. Biblical names have always been good choices. Sarah and Noah remain popular. So does Jordan. No matter what first name we are given at birth, we are stuck with it for life. If we are named for a beloved elder in the family tree, we might embrace it or reject it, but there's little we can do to erase it. I remember an old joke about a guy named Barney Schnitzengruber who petitioned the courts to get his name changed. I can understand that, the judge told him. What do you want to change it to, he asked. Jim, Barney replied. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 5.44 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org life.